What's going on YouTube gardeners? It's your boy Sydney from the Naked Gardener channel. In this video, we're gonna show you how to do an apartment tomato gardening for beginners. And we're gonna start right now. All right, so uh, doing this whole pandemic uh, thing that's going on right now, a lot of people aren't able to buy seeds uh, to grow their own food. So Mrs. Naked Gardener was at Walmart doing some grocery shopping and went to the gardening center and found this lovely tomato gar uh, container uh, for what, $9? It was nine something. And normally these go anywhere from 15 to $20 and stuff like that. So uh, if you find something like this, and this video, after watching this video, we're gonna show you how to properly care for these when you're bringing them home from uh, the store, especially from the big box store. And the main thing, uh, with bringing these in a lot of big box stores are just going to uh, overly saturate and just water these and so uh, you want to be mindful of that when she brought this in it was very the soil was very wet and it was very hard and very compact because what they do is they just spray on there and as you spray it just compacts on here so what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this uh, soil out of here put some additional um, uh, soil in here and then we're going to prune some of these up as you can see we got some damaged uh, leaves in here and uh, we're going to kind of take some of these uh, lower leaves off to allow some airflow to go up in here so we're going to take these uh, some of this soil off we're going to just scratch some of this off and it's still uh, moist so we don't have to worry about it damaging anything let's put that in some of our apartment compost. You want to show them our apartment compost there? So now we got most of this soil out of here. We're going to get a little bit more out of here. And the next thing we're going to do now is we're gonna prune some of these uh, lower leaves off. And the reason, like I said, you want to do this is just to get more airflow through here. All right, so we're gonna take a few of these leaves off of here, just get you some nice clean shears, or you can do some scissors, either, either way. There's two types of tomato plants that you have. You have your indeterminate plants, those could range and you, those could get as tall as anywhere from seven feet to 15 feet or even longer. These that these are gonna be considered patio plants or uh, determinate plants. These normally get anywhere from three to five feet. So most of the times these won't get uh, any, no more taller than this. But the, with these determinate plants though, once they grow their fruit, they basically die off. So if you have a lot of containers, you want to uh, grow these, especially into if you're growing them from seeds, you want to grow them in succession by like almost like every two weeks. But indeterminate plants, they have a stem or a branch that's called a sucker. Mrs. Naked Gardener like to call them knuckles for some reason. Uh, anyway, so like for instance, let me find one right here. Come up real quick, quick right here. So we have these, uh, they'll come up from the, in your armpit. You kind of just imagine an armpit. There's another arm coming out of it. So basically on a determinate plant, you don't want to cut this off because it allows more fruit to come on here. On the indeterminate plant, depending on if you want it bushy or not, you will cut this off. And now when you cut this off, you can put it in some water, let it root up, and you can grow another tomato from there. Very easy to propagate. Yeah, this is one of the easiest plants to propagate and add more uh, food to your resources. However, right now, all we are is just gonna prune all the damaged leaves because the damaged leaves, you're just basically taking all the energy off of that plant. So like the leaves like these, we're just gonna snip this off and you wanna get as close to the stem as possible. You see right here, just get as close as possible. This leaf right here, find out where that's at. Get as close as possible. And this one right here. We'll even do this one there. And that's, as you can see, is, is gonna allow more air to flow through here. We already have some tomatoes on here. 
So once the sunlight hits it, it's going to uh, allow the, the tomatoes to ripen. It so a lot uh, of energy to those tomatoes that mm -hmm. it's trying to grow. So I'm going to finish pruning, the, pruning these, and then we'll go to uh, show you what the next step is after that. You don't want to prune any more than one third of any plants that you're pruning, even if you're cutting the grass. Now we're going to uh, provide some uh, slow releasing fertilizer uh, on here. And the things that you could fertilize this with is we have some um, eggshells here that we use and we just uh, use a coffee grinder or you could use a mortise and you just, you don't really need a lot. And this provides an excellent source of calcium to help get uh, prevent any type of uh, blossom end rot. And that's the uh, at the bottom of these tomatoes, sometimes or even any type of nightshade. At the bottom of it, when you have a low uh, calcium uh, efficiency in, in your soil, it doesn't allow the plant to pull it up. And so that's how you get those uh, bad blemishes at the bottom of all your nightshades, like your tomatoes, your peppers, your eggplants, and your okra. Even though I've never seen it in okra, but mostly in your peppers and your tomatoes. So we're gonna mix that in. Now that we mix that in, we're gonna add some uh, better soil because with the soil for this, you want loose, loomy, um, acidic type soil. Uh, normally we'll, we'll purchase or we'll make our own soil scent, but now that we're in the apartment garden, we don't have that luxury. So we're gonna use some of this soil here. Just add it to the top. I normally don't like using uh, miracle Grow products, but this was on sale, and this is supposed to be the organic uh, premium potting mix, and we don't need a lot of it, so that's a good thing. And when you put the, you, when you put your soil on into your any type of containers, you want to leave some type of room. And I'll show you why here in a minute after we finish uh, putting some soil in here. With this soil, as you can see, you got some uh, perlite, which is going to help with drainage. And then it might even have some other slow releasing fertilizer. But mostly just the perlite. So as you see, we left a little bit of room from the top. And now there's a other slow releasing fertilizer you can add on there. You can add some bone meal, and this is a good source of uh, phosphorus, which is going to make plants to uh, flower. And that's what you basically want on your tomato plants, your eggplants, your pepper plants. You want them to produce flowers. So you want to keep as low as nitrogen as possible. Another thing you can add on there is some worm casting. It's basically the best, one of the best ones you can add on here. And you don't need a lot for this size. You just need maybe like a handful. And the good thing about with organic fertilizer, you can use as much or as little as possible and you won't damage your plant from there. Same with the bone meal. We'll just do about a handful. And so what you want to do is just scratch, scratch it into the surface. Now, we're going to water this in. And this is for the simple fact that now you want to add um, a liquid fertilizer. It will allow the plant to take up the nutrients immediately. We put a little bit of fish emulsion. It has a little bit of 511 of your MPK percentage. And when any type of potty mix that you have or type of container that you have, you want to make sure you have some type of uh, a drainage holes at the bottom of that. As you can see, we have some. Yeah. And that way, when you have enough water in here, it'll just be able to release from that. You start seeing the water release from the bottom of here, then you know you have watered enough. There you go, you start seeing it drip through there. Two pests that we've seen that are very damaging to these tomato plants 
is one is aphids and tomato hornworms. Uh, last year was our first year ever counting tomato hornworms. And so uh, with the tomato horn, hornworms is what you want to be as proactive with this is you want to spray some type of BT spray solution on here. And if it rains, uh, you want to reapply that uh, spray mixture on there. Other than that, uh, we never had any uh, problems with uh, pests uh, just besides the just heat. When you're watering this, you, as you saw, I've watered at the base level. Uh, uh, now, some people say you don't want to water above, but Pop's Garden, he just will always water above, you know, he just water above all of his plants. But his garden is direct out in the sun, and he waters his plants about like five, six o'clock in the morning. So by that time it gets um, about 10 mid, about mid noon, it allows the sun to dry in North Texas. Well, he's in Central Texas, so that's a plus for there. But uh, the reason why you don't want to water from above because they were saying that the, the pathogens and bacteria that's in the soil when it splashes up, it gets underneath it here and you get uh, what they call a blight where it damages up the leaves and stuff like that. One way to prevent that is uh, you want to put some type of mulch around here like some compost and some pine needles or some just regular mulch so that way to keep the soil nice and moist and it allows it from keeping it from splattering up from there. So we're going to do keep you in, involved in this series. We're going to be posting a lot of this on our Instagram and our other social media uh, sources out. We'll put a probably put a playlist above here to show you other things that we do to help you out in the patio garden. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the like button. And until the next video, let's grow together.